Don't for, yeah, don't forget those waist straps. Pants, boots. Chill, 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 chill. We're here to help. We're here to help you, brother. We're here to help you. Oh, here to help. Well, this is the vehicle we're going to wrap. Hold his legs. Hold his legs. Right here. 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 Right Hey, move on. He's trying to get. He's not breathing. Move on. Move on. He's black. Right. Hey, if he. Him walk. Okay. Walk need you to stand. Arm. If he does not stand, stand, him under stand his arm. Arm. let's go. Come on. If he wants to run. We'll just chase in the right direction. Okay. Let's just walk with us. Watching me. Shirts are done now. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Grab his legs. Listen, we're trying to help, brother. Ah! To the side. Over here. Left. In the box. Left. In the box. Don't drop. You're good. You're good. You're good. Left. Left.
these things. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Yeah. Where's the rocket, Bert? What's up? Oh, it's right in between the branches in there, kind of tucked away. All personnel of this prestigious Silver Flag site, the 801st Red Horse Training Squadron, Lieutenant Craig, Lieutenant Colonel Craig Poulin, Chief Master Sergeant ja John Agnew, Senior Master Sergeant James Eckert, Master Sergeant Jeff Brad, joined highly dedicated force development managers led by Chief Master Sergeant Edward Fitzgerald, Mr. Clifford, and Mr. Carrillo at IMSC for their finance. Brigadier General Kale, before coming to the formal award portion, I turn it over to you for your opening remarks. Good afternoon, engineers. Good afternoon, sir. All right, not too shabby. I have to admit, this is a little weird for me. I'm not used to standing behind a podium with a microphone. I'm more used to standing out there in the middle of the crowd and being able to talk. But there's so many of you, and I've been kind of screaming a lot this week, uh, so my voice isn't gonna project far enough, so I apologize for that. But uh, uh, I think this event here, um, I, I think one senior leader in, in our past history, you know, really kind of uh, had a great quote which kind of summarizes what, what we're doing here today. And so I think a lot of you probably remember in your history books of, uh, General Douglas MacArthur, and what he said is, is, you know, on these fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds so that on other fields, on other days, bear the fruits of victory. And I think that stands true here. What we're doing here today is, is preparing you for what you might face in the future. I'd like to think that what we're doing is harder than what you will face in the future but i'll be honest with you a lot of the events that we did here today while individually they probably will be harder than what you will face in the future but the complexity and the size of the challenge that we'll be facing i think will be much harder than what we're doing here and that just kind of really invigorates of why it's important to make sure that we're always doing our best to ensure that our airmen are doing what they need to do to prepare themselves for the future. What we do here <clears throat> in combat, we spend a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So I'm just out of curious on here in readiness challenge. Was there any blood expended? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I was gonna say a little bit. That's kind of what I wanted to hear. How about sweat? Any sweat? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. And were there any tears? Yes. 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 Yes that you did these tasks in a safe manner. And the crying piece, I can't help it. You guys are all sensitive or whatever, so that's on you. So, hey, let's please give a, a big round of applause uh, to our uh, Red Horsemen over here on the side of, of all the support that they gave uh, to you all uh, this week. In 
addition to all the, the Red Horsemen here, there's a lot of other folks came from all over the, the world. I know some uh, from the, the CTS in Germany, some from uh, you know the Dobbins uh, and the uh, Charlotte uh, training centers, and a whole bunch of past cadre. And I know a lot of my uh, AFCEC staff here uh, was helping out, so let's please give them uh, a round robin or a round ball. finish up here by saying that this is not the end. A lot of you think here, you know, we're having a ceremony, we're handing out some trophies, and then when you head out here, you know, this, this is done. But no, this is actually the beginning, in my opinion. This should hopefully re reinvigorate your thoughts about what we need to do as an Air Force and what our airmen need to be prepared for. And so what I am hoping, or what I'm expecting, is that when you all leave here, you go back to your installations, and you ensure that you share this knowledge. You create other training events to help prepare your airmen. Uh, you don't need to put on a readiness challenge back at your installation, but you should definitely be doing a lot of other things uh, to create uh, different activities to ensure that your airmen are ready. And not only for civil engineers, I also want you to do this for the rest of your mission support uh, comrades. I think it's just as important for them uh, to train with you all to prepare them for what, the, what might happen. And then finally, you know, after you have your civil engineers and your mission support folks, you know, please spread this ethos across uh, all our uh, airmen at your wings and at your installations. Uh, this is gonna be a team fight. You, know, you hear about multi-capable airmen, and a lot of folks will really kind of, you know, pigeonhole that on to, you know, hey, I refuel airplanes and I also load bombs on them. But I will tell you, we've been doing this multi-capable thing in civil engineers for decades, and this fight is going to require a lot of multi-capable airmen doing all sorts of things, a lot of which you may or may not be trained for. And you got to make sure that you're always constantly making sure you're personally ready physically ready, mentally ready. That being said, uh, let's get on with the award ceremony. Let's, let's hand out some uh, awards for our uh, top performers, and then let's see who wins. Over to you. Thank you, sir. And now the time we've all been waiting for, the presentation of awards. We will recognize the men and women who worked the hardest and had the most fun this week. This year's Readiness Challenge competition teams. First, a new award to Readiness Challenge, the Colonel Suzanne Whalett Award, given to the best CGO, CH, when your name is called. For the best CGO, Captain Austin Kelly, Air Combat Command. For the best senior NCO, Master Sergeant Ty Helms, Air National Guard. For the best NCO, Tech Sergeant Jeffrey Dagon, yeah. Air Force Global Strike. Yeah. For the best Airman, Senior Airman Dominique Wooten, you say. Thank <laughs> you. 
one more engineer who has dedicated countless hours in honing the skills of our craftsmen, several of which are represented today. With six years on active duty, two years in the reserves, and 27 years in the Air National Guard, Master Sergeant Anthony Bowen decided to spend his last days in service here competing at Readiness Challenge. On behalf of more than 1,300 engineers you've taught in the last 12 years as a regional training site instructor, Master Arm Bowen, please come forward to be recognized. And now we have the specific team awards for the two large and unique team events, the Fog of War as well as the Warrior Course Award. For the Fog of War Top Team Award, Air Combat Command. Course top team award, AETC. <laughs> Finally, the Brigadier General William T. Meredith Award, awarded to the first and second highest overall scoring teams. For second place, Air National Guard. For the first place and the overall winner of Readiness Challenge 9, Air Combat Command. everyone coming out here. I almost canceled uh, Nellis's entire budget this year when I saw that cooler come out. And <laughs> good, good thing on your leaders, your bosses, the Mots and Mayors taught you well, don't get the general wet. That's a good thing. Uh, it's also really inspiring to see a father and a son on the same team. I hope you guys take great pride and uh, to me that's what makes uh, civil engineering and the Guard, Active Reserve, uh, it just makes this really special. I know uh, last year uh, the reserve won, 
Uh, I don't know what happened this year, but we're glad you came out. <laughs> it was really great to see an uh, active duty guard show up this year, because where the hell were you last year? So uh, yeah, this is pretty awesome. We do this, this event readiness challenge for three things. You know, number one, to test out our airman's contingency skills. Number two, to assess our unit's readiness. And I think most importantly, number three, for our civil engineer warfighting ethos. Let me hear it. Engineers, lead the way! 10. Black manners, you're dismissed. Flight, height, left, height.